Hello and welcome to the Joint Dota League Season 3 here on Hefla TV 2. This is going to be a best of two series between Moscow 5 and Balkan Bears Corleone. Um, as for your casters, I'm Grand Nasty and I'm joined by Blackadder. Um, but before we go into that, there was a little bit of a technical issue starting up uh, into this game. So hopefully the stream didn't die for too long. Um, hopefully it's just right back up. Um, but yeah, that intro video is going to look like absolute garbage. Thanks for joining me, Blackadder. Hopefully you're actually in the Skype call and that didn't drop too. Yeah, I am in the Skype call. It's uh, been a long, long evening so far, but with any luck, we should have a good game available for the two of us here. And I think we really should. Both of these teams, they play very aggressively, and they're on very similar levels to each other. Um, out of Balkan Bears, I'm expecting full five-man, just super aggressive push. They're known for their magic hero, and they go for these very super aggressive pushing strats. Um, it's pretty refreshing to watch, and we might even be able to see a Meepo. I'm holding out for it, but, I don't know, hopes are high. We'll see. Uh, I've cast uh, one or two games with the Balkan Bears before I end up joining uh, joining Heffler with you guys. And i got to say, it was very refreshing to watch them play. They had Leshrac played by Levy in a very core role. It was, it was refreshing. It was unique, and I liked it. I honestly did. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun watching them play. Moscow 5 are also pretty similar, although they're not as outlandish. They do like going for their individual pickoffs, and as you can see with their first two picks, it's going to kind of play into that with a Marana as well as a Brewmaster. I'm kind of expecting that to be a support Marana, but we'll see what uh, support they're going to back up or set up the arrows with. Indeed we will, but now as we see the Brewmaster picked up in Marana, this does leave the question of what's next for the Balkan Bears. They've got their Skyrath Mage. Are we going to see the likes of the Earthshaker? I definitely think it would be a solid pick, but no, it's going to be Nature's Prophet. It definitely can contribute to the early pushing strats that they do like going for, and also, it's kind of a pseudo setup for your Mystic Flare coming up from your Skyrath Mage in the Sprout. Usually you're not going to see people holding on for Tangos and Quelling Blades for that long, um, but then again, it is pretty unreliable with four staffs being pretty good about getting you out. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's still a solid pick, and I'd like to see them get active around the map with this Nature's Prophet early. Yes, yeah, so would I. If they, the more active a Nature's Prophet is, the better the game the Nature's Prophet will have. If we're seeing courier snubs, if we're seeing early pushes, just ending to up TPing into brawls with just phase boots is enough. I'm just hoping for aggression, and Balkan Bears generally don't disappoint on that front. Yeah, okay, so it looks like the stream is back online and is back up all good. I'll keep an eye on it, just on the corner of my eye to make sure everything is going properly, but it looks like there's going to be no more hiccups. I have no idea what happened there. But as for the next bands, we have Shadow Shaman and Viper taken out by both of these teams. Well, removing the Viper, always a wise idea. One of the most pain-in-the-ass heroes to deal with, the corrosive skin, just his sheer tankability. Not something friendly. On the flip side of that coin... Shadow Shaman, good pusher, good control effects, wise ban here. You don't want to be giving Vulcan Bears, Shadow Shaman, and Nature's Prophet. Yeah, as well as it combos pretty well with the Skyrath Mage, Shadow Shaman's biggest weakness as a support Damn is his lack of ability to get in range for his shackles. But with a concussive shot from Skyrath Mage, that weakness is more or less negated, as Bane is going to be picked up for Moscow 5. Usually we're looking more at the um, Shadow Demon. Honestly, I would have liked to see that pick a little bit better, as the defensive disruptions up against the Skyrath Mage Mystic Flare are very reliable to secure the negation of that damage, as well as the uh, setup coming out from the disruption, disruption is a little bit more reliable, too, as you can't toggle off the uh, disruption. I don't know, it's still a really solid pickup, but maybe this is just the one that they're more comfortable with. We'll also offer them some more single-target lockdown with the Enfeeble. Definitely better than their Purge. I, I generally agree with that one, yeah. The Bane brings on in terms of control as well, though. You've, you've also got the threat of, what the hell is that? <laughs> well, it's a Zeus. I saw one last game as well, but it was played as a support, and I thought it was really nasty. It didn't really work out for them, but I don't know. I'm expecting this to be a mid-Zeus for Wii, and I'm expecting this to give them a lot of nuking damage, although I have no idea what is up with picking it this early. I think he can last pick that, because I doubt it's going to be banned. I don't even know. Um... But Pugna, Bane, as well as Brown are all fairly squishy heroes that are going to fall to that magic nuke damage as long as... Oh my goodness, I love it! <laughs> oh, Global Strat coming up from Balcom Bears as they go for the Bloodseeker. I don't know. I it's, It looks like a pub draft to me. What in Divinity's Edge is going on here? Bloodseeker and Zeus on the same team in one game? I, I, I honestly Damn. don't know. Oh, what are we going to see next? Meepo? Probably. Uh. <laughs> I, I would not be surprised. Um, 
I'm expecting another support to come out from them, and the Earthshaker is still in the pool. Um, so I'd, I'd like to see the Earthshaker, although, pff, I don't know. Support Meepo, that's that's a thing, I suppose, as long as you're able to get your level 3. Earthshaker is the ban from Moscow 5, and that's definitely a solid ban, but I suppose they're just trying to wake us casters up, because this should be an absolute bloodbath, and if it's not, it's going to be... All the towers falling down in the favor of Moscow 5, just pushing down with the Pugna. I don't know, th this has to really snowball out of control for Balkan Bears to seize this game, but I, I can see it coming out for them. Bloodseeker is very underrated as far as his silence is concerned, and especially up against a Brewmaster, there's no way he can purge off that silence, even BKB. It's going to persist through. So if Brewmaster jumps in and then gets silenced, his ultimate's not going to be available, and then they can burst him down with Zeus as well as Bloodseeker. As unconventional as it is, I I, I like it. <laughs> I think it could actually work. It could work for Balkan Bears, but my main concern here is that Pugna. Yeah. I mean, you consider Zeus's high mana costs and spamminess. You consider Skyrath Mage's Mystic Flare. It's not going to be pleasant either way from where we stand. I mean, but then again, in what game do we ever see Bloodseeker and Zeus on the same team in a pro game near enough? Um, I don't know. I, I think they're actually draft more together than anything else. Ugh, I don't know. Um, because usually your Bloodseeker is going to be draft in those global lineups, usually with Nature's Prophet and Invoker in the mid instead of your Zeus, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Moscow 5 pick up the Wraith King, a more conventional hero that's presumably going to be going in the tri lane with the Marana Bane. A great stun to start things off, or to follow up after the arrow lands after a nightmare. Indeed, it's a good, good hero for the draft but for Moscow 5, but I'm, I'm still slightly confused with the Balkan Bears here. I mean... I'm just trying my best to ignore it, because I don't think there's much we can say. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's picks like this that yeah, sidetrack me, because I have a very... Uh, a very analytical approach to Dota. I have a very technical mindset, especially when it comes to things like the draft. And I see this, and it just makes my brain hurt. It just, what? what? I... Sometimes you just got a YOLO, and it, it can work out. And for Balkan Bears, when they play aggressive, that's what suits them best. I think, as unconventional as these picks are, it's a playstyle that's going to fit their players. Whether it's going to work out or not is a completely different story. If this Pugna gets off to an early start, I can see Moscow 5 just completely wrecking the towers. Bane is innately very good up against Bloodseeker, holding him in place while he can focus him down, so he's not able to get any kills in order yeah, to uh, regen up, as well as the Enfeeble, also very good against him. I, I think they have plenty of tools to keep this Bloodseeker in check, but if they start out the fight with like a big Zeus ultimate with Nature's Prophet ulti on top, and they'll go for even more global with the Silencer last pick, and that's going to be their mid-hero. How are these lanes going to work out? I... Ah, uh, jungle, Bloodseeker, safe lane Zeus with a Skyrath support, and off-lane Nature's Prophet, perhaps? I'd, I'd I rather see the Nature's Prophet in the jungle than the Bloodseeker. I think he can do more out of the jungle than Bloodseeker can, but honestly, <laughs> I'll be damned if I know. I <laughs> they, they might as well have just randomed all these heroes. I, uh, I don't know. There, there's got to be something going through the, uh, the minds of Vulcan Bears that we pesky casters don't understand. I mean, other than global, the lineup from Vulcan Bears still is fairly squishy. I mean, then you've got to consider the magical damage and nuking potential out of that Moscow 5, considering some of that's pure damage, some of it's AoE, and then you've got Pugna Blast on top of that. It's, it's, it's scary, and um, I do fear slightly for Balkan Bears here, considering how squishy they actually are, but as, uh, as this game starts, I suppose we should introduce the players, shouldn't we? So, on that note, for the Balkan Bears, we have Zenigata on the Skywrath Mage, we have Buffney on the... Nature's Prophet, we've got Wee on the Silencer, over on the Bloodseeker we've got Padrino, and finally, in the mid lane we have Levy, and that leaves you with uh, Moscow 5. And on Moscow 5 we have PGG taking up the Brana, looks like this is going to be a roaming support duo with, I think that is, oh dear, is that Nexus on the Bane? We're going to have Tron playing on the Brewmaster, and that's Blow Your Brain I think on the Pugna, and that will leave Vigos on the Wraith King. Yeah, it's, it's a nightmare when people don't actually use their real names, but I think that is Nexus. But it might just be a stand-in that I have no idea what his name is since his profile was private and I couldn't check it out. This could be a bad start for Bloodseeker if he gets caught out. 
but the smoke is not going to break in the Radiant Jungle. Well, they are lurking around. They all might think of charging down, but with the Wraith King leading the charge, especially with the Bane there, this could be a nightmare. Yep, there's your nightmare. It's going to go straight into a Vigos stun, as well as an arrow. That's going to easily be First Blood. There's no way to stop that one. Blow Your Brain will pick up First Blood for Moscow 5. And that's really the hero that Balkan Bears are going to have the most trouble with if he gets those early levels up. The farm is going to be nice to secure that he doesn't die in lane. That's going to be your early boots for your Pugna, and he's already started out with a decent amount of stat items. Um, I don't like how these lanes are actually panning out for Moscow 5 if they actually leave the Pugna solo, but it looks like it's more or less going to be a tri lane with the Bane and Marana also supporting him, but currently they're roaming towards mid, where we have Skyrath as well as Silencer and Zeus all sitting around. Mm. Now, we thought it would be a, a Silencer mid. Now, that would make some sense, but now you still got Levy here, and it's going to be a Zeus mid and a, a Silencer support, potentially? Or is it? As another fight breaks out, the Bane getting caught completely out of position. He'll go down, potentially, to one more right click. It'll come through from Silencer, and he will clean that one up. Yeah, it's going to be a support Silencer, it seems. Coming up from Wii, it definitely can work, although... He needs that level 6 as soon as possible, because his early laning stage is going to be pretty weak. If they'd known that that was a Wraith King versus Silencer matchup, I think they would have given the Silencer that one, as he's able to harass from range very effectively. And, I don't know, he should win that matchup pretty easily. We have a Silence being thrown out, and PGG's going to get gone on with a concussive shot. They don't have level 2 on the Skyrath Mage, so the damage isn't coming out from him, but it is from the Silencer with those Glaives of Wisdom, as well as the... <clears throat> Excuse me, last word, they're going to be able to pick off another kill, and four int being stolen by the Silencer already at one minute in. This aggressive play is really going to propel this Silencer to a lot higher amounts of intelligence you usually see. Well, you say aggressive play, did we honestly expect anything else when these two teams clash? And I'll point this out, we have a Vigos mid with a Wraith King. How many games can you say you have legitimately seen a Wraith King mid? Um... None. This is a first for me, and definitely a first Zeus versus Wraith King, because I haven't seen Zeus mid in quite a long time. So, yeah, <laughs> the top matchup is going to be a little bit more conventional with 1v1 Brewmaster versus Nature's Prophet. Most of the action is going to be wherever PGG as well as the Bane are roaming towards, and right now that's bottom, and they find out we potentially. No Nightmare comes out, and the Concussive Shot is going to be thrown as they have the vision, but the arrow is still going to land on Wii. The Nightmare toggle not going to help him there, and the damage is coming out. They have too much. The Pugna Blast is going to be enough. They're going to lose their Bane for this. Presumably, as the right clicks are coming out from the Bloodseeker, is he going to get that heal from it? He's not, as Skyrath Mage is being pursued. PGG picks them up a second kill, and three for threes. Now they're looking for more. Bloodseeker, he's caught out by the Pugna, and that extra damage coming up from the Silence is enough to secure it off. Silencer is down here, and Blow Your Brain, the TP comes in from the Nature's Prophet. He does not have a point to sprout, or actually he does. He's going to be able to get it, but doesn't lock in. Blow Your Brain, a couple more auto attacks is all they need, but the Nightmare delays things. The arrow's going to land on Nature's Prophet as Marana is picked off by the Silencer. Now Silencer going to get another kill into Blow Your Brain, or not. The Decrepify comes out, but it's just going to amplify the damage from the... Oh, goodness. Skyrath Mage's Bane is being surrounded by creeps as well as heroes, and gets brought down six to five, and it's not even three minutes in. I, I've seen the aggressive games where we've had two kills a minute. I've not had nearly four <laughs> kills a minute before. This is this is ridiculous, and we've already got TPs down here again from PGG, from Blow Your Brain. They could look to fight again, and that would not surprise me in the slightest, just judging by these two teams. I mean, I've seen aggression. I've seen let's get in the enemy's face, but this, this isn't getting in their face. This is getting into their base. Ay, ay, ay. I, I, I really do not know. I mean, I, I like to think analytically about a game, but how can you think analytically about a game that's just, yeah, let's fight. Let's fight for the sake of fighting and fighting's sake. And now, even Blow Your Brain's getting harassed some more. He's going to eat another last word combination from that silencer. And Wii is just doing some good damage across the board. Yeah, he really is. He has 10 stolen intelligence. Those guys of wisdom are already hurting. If the action keeps up, which it might in mid, as Levi's very low, no arrow was thrown out, or if it was, it was missed on my screen. But yeah, all the action is condensed on this bottom lane as the Silencer Bloodseeker lane is working out. How many times do you get to say that? Uh, I don't think I've ever been able to say that, not even in a pub game. That, that, that's saying something, and we also have Vigos in a lot of trouble here. In comes the TP from the Nature's Prophet of Buffney. Could be more than enough with Zeus right click, but in comes a concussive blast. That's going to slow it down enough for Zeus to hopefully clean this one up. One right click comes through from Buffany, one from the Zeus, and that will be a dead Wraith King. Yeah, Wraith King level 5, no ultimate available. That's going to be 7 to 5 our kill score. 
And while we talked about in the draft how we'd like to see Nature's Prophet be active, he's been involved in three kills, although dying once himself. He's been putting those TPs in with Sprouts to good use. It's down in bottom, we might have some more action. I don't know, PGG's looking for the air. Is he going to throw it? Neil? No. Bloodseeker, way too far to the left for that one to connect. They are going to force a lot of heroes from Balkan Bears to heal up, as we is now taking a very long path toward bottom. But with Tranquil Boots, as well as a Salve and Tangos, he can Tango as much as he wants, although, left alone, Padrina's kind of going to be at a disadvantage here as he can't do much up against this lane. Brewmaster is the one that we haven't seen pretty much anything of, as he does not have that global TP available to him. He does have a TP scroll and his ultimate, so if a fight breaks out, it could be huge, and while well, fight breaking out into mid, the concussive shot as well as Arcane Bolt's going the way of Wraith King, still not level 6. They might have the nuke damage, they don't have ultimate mana for Zeus, and neither do they have the lightning bolt, so he's actually going to be able to make it out alive because Zeus is such a mana-intensive hero. They TP in the Brewmaster, but that's more or less going to be wasted as he'll walk towards top. Indeed, he's just going to rotate back to the top. It was more a threat just to stop them chasing Vigos too far under that tier 1 in the mid lane. But while that's going on bot lane, we already have positioning and posturing once more. Bane, PGG, and Blow Your Brain, they're all starting to get some kind of uh, momentum going down here. And we've already seen a little bit of siege on the towers. And I hear a primal split mid lane is going to be a re-engage. They actually turn around and go back on Levy. I thought that Brewmaster would go back up to the top lane, but it seems not. Vigos picking up the kill there on Levy. Yeah, it's going to be the big wraparound coming up from the Brewmaster and a very easy kill on the Zeus. No innate escapes as well as just being very squishy as... I don't know, I am hesitant to look away from bottom as the fight could break out at any time, especially if an arrow lands. Will it? Oh, the Nightmare onto Zenigata. He's going to be dropped down. They won't be able to get the Brain Sap off. He's silenced and now the Glaives of Wisdom are working onto the Bane. They'll get this guy with Mage, but the Zeus ulti Nature's Prophet Ultimate does so much damage. Everybody's so darn low. The Brana forced to leap away. PGG, they're going to chase him down to the Bloodseeker. She's dead and now the TV in from Nature's Prophet. That's... What a combo! 14 yeah. intelligence on your silencer. What a turnaround. That sheer combination of damage between the Thunder God's Wrath and the Wrath of Nature. I think this is uh, Wrath of the Balkan Bears. We'll call it that. It's the Wrath of the Balkan Bears strategy. But then again, now oh. you've got Vigos running into Levy, starting to do some good work on the Zeus, chopping him away with a couple of right clicks. But can Levy survive this one? I don't think so. Not with Vigos and a haste room. A couple more chops, and that could be a very dead Zeus. But in comes the support from Zenigata on that Skyrath Mage. He gets the slow, but that slow does nothing. And now we're going to see a turnaround and a good amount of damage running to Zenigata. And they're mixing their damage across two targets, though. And that's going to be a reincarnation forced here by Vigos. But now you get the silence coming in from Padrino on that uh, Blood Seeker. And I don't think I'm actually having to say those words. I, I really do not believe it. But it'll be a force back when the arrow flies in from PGG, and Vigos will survive for now. <laughs> yeah, Brewmaster safely farming away, has his Blink Dagger finish in the um, bottom lane. Blow Your Brain looking pretty good as far as his farm is concerned as well. Arcane Boots, Basilius, as well as a completed wand. Presumably we'll be going towards the mechanism, but that um, mana sustain is going to be very useful as they TP down the Brewmaster. It looks like there's going to be more aggression down in the bottom lane, and with only the Silencer and Bloodseeker here, I don't think they're going to be able to do anything, although we do have the Nature's Prophet Ultimate as well as Zeus Ultimate online. No mana for Zeus Ulti, however, and with the tower going down, there's not going to be a defense, and... Clash averted, despite there being 17 kills at 8 minutes, and PGG might get gone on. They have a rupture here, and he doesn't have that much support close. They might decide to go for it, or not. I don't know. I think you need to use the rupture pretty much off of cooldown, but PGG, he has too much now, as Tron as well as the Bane are going to be inbound, and it's just going to be a push. Can we have from uh, Moscow 5 here? Yeah, completely agreed. And we wouldn't have seen initiation from the Bloodseeker and from We anyway, because there was that Nether Ward down, and that would have just stopped oh. all form of aggression coming out of that silencer in that uh, in that fight. Sure, you have good damage combination of the uh, two ultimates of the Nature's Prophet and the Zeus, but there's still just too much damage potential when you've got four heroes bearing down on the lane. Yeah, definitely, and Tier 2 Tower not looking too great as they're going to be able to take this without much of a contest coming up from the Balkan Bears. As aggressive as they were early, now they're just going to try to avoid fights as with the ward down as well as a split available and a blink on the Brewmaster, they just don't want to risk it and... Understood. Zeus now has mana for his ultimate and we do have Nature's Prophet ultimate, so if they went for more, they definitely would be punished, but they will just back off and potentially look for a kill onto Levy in mid. He has a double damage rune is going towards top. Potentially going to put some pressure on this tier 1 tower, and Nature's Prophet's just going to take that one solo. As the TP's come in, the blink from the Brewmaster, he splits immediately. Looking for the vision inside of the trees, will we be able to get it? There's the boulder toss onto Buffney, and he is going to fall one way or another. He drops the Nature's Prophet ultimate with his last breath, but that is going to be it. We do have Vigas over in the 
River area, but still Nature's Prophet dying for a tier 1 tower. That's a trade that he'll take as long as that didn't get denied. Um, and it was by the Bane. So Moscow 5, they get a better trade across the map. Two towers going their way as well as the deny up top. Yep, those two towers are going to certainly help out. Well, uh, two towers? Two towers deny? No, no, that? one tower denied up top. The two towers down in bottom were taken oh, by oh, Moscow. Yeah, yeah, that's good. okay. Yeah, it, two for one trade in that respect of towers, but. Uh... The Nature's Prophet's going to have to be a little bit more careful, because if he gets initiated on like that, he's wasting a lot of his time. If he, if he gets taken off the map, if he gets killed like that, he needs to have good, uh, good map and awareness and good ward coverage up at the same time. If he can rotate and get those towers with split push, that's perfect. But right now we've got a case of Moscow 5. They want another set of towers. They're going to start pushing this top tier 1, and now in comes the last word, just going to force back the Brewmaster for a few seconds and buy a bit of time. Everyone from the... Uh, Balkan Bears are starting to set up up on this top lane with the exception of Zeus and Buffney on that Nature's Prophet. We could potentially see aggression mid, we could see aggression top, but all M5 want, all they want at all in this game are the towers. They will happily push through heroes if they need to, but they're going to at least respect the threat of that nether ward with other Balkan Bears. They cannot just push in like that. If they try to fight under that nether ward, they will just die. They have such a high mana cost across their heroes. Yeah, they tried to kill it off with the Nature's Prophet Treants, but it's not going to be enough damage in order to do so. It takes quite a lot of hits from those summons in order to kill it off, and we are going to have Bloodseeker coming in. He's going to rupture up PGG. PGG can't go anywhere. Now the ultimate combo comes out with the Silencer ulti on top. They're going to instantly blow up PGG, and everybody else is going to be in a full headlong retreat. And, well, I think this is their opening to take a Tier 1 tower of their own in mid. Mm, I'm unsure Maybe. about that. I'm, I am really unsure about that, because from where we sit, they only lost PGG on the Marana. That is a support Marana. And they've got all of their ultimates up near enough, with the exception of Primal Split, which is up in 8 seconds anyway. And now we just see the re-engage, potentially. They can just come back in and fight. If they got more than the uh, PGG killed, certainly, I would agree. But off the back of this, it's going to be a push into that tier. One arrow is going to fly through, look for whatever it can find. It ooh, will be very close to Zenigata, but not quite. And now they might just go for the tier two. But now we get the silence onto Tron. That's going to buy some time. But now we get the Fiends. Levy locked down potentially. If he gets brought down, that's a pretty big kill considering that was the mid-Zeus. And he will fall. But now we've got in the middle of the mix the primal split. They're going to look for Wii. They're going to look for Pad as well. And they're going to bring down the Bloodseeker. The Bloodseeker is going to fall. Not a chance for that one. They've got suspended in midair the Skywrath Mage. He's going to be the next target. And they're just systematically tearing apart the Balkan Bears here. The Balkan Bears did not build enough momentum. And relying on a global strat versus a very early game. Uh, draft coming out of the Moscow 5. I, I'm going to say the edge is for Moscow 5 right here. And while this is going on, sure, you do have Buffney getting that uh, extra tier 1 on that bot lane, but that's not enough. You're losing a tier 2. Yeah, and there's very little that Balkan Bears can actually do about this. With their ultimate combo already spent, it dropped people very low, but it wasn't enough. They're actually going to be forced back by the Nature's Prophet putting some pressure onto the tier 2 tower of their own. And so it's not going to be a full trade, but they do get the better damage. I, I would completely agree, they do get the better damage, and I'm wondering how long it's going to be before we see another push coming through from Moscow 5. I mean, Vigos, the rest of them, sure, they don't have much in terms of items, but they have the pressure, they have the level advantage right now. And from where we stand, we've got Nature's Prophet potentially getting picked off again, but Blow Your Brain is in the mix, Thunder God's Wrath will drop, and now you've got Padrino coming in, looking to try to bring down Blow Your Brain, who's also silenced up by the last word. They, he will fall, We takes up the dominating spree. But in the meantime, Tron will be forced to fall back, and that's a two-for-one trade at the end of the day in favor of the Balkan Bears. Yeah, it is going to be a favorable trade as far as the net kills, although still, as far as the worth on these heroes, as well as the effectiveness of the items they're picking up, I would say still favors Moscow 5, as this Bloodseeker's build is very peculiar. He's going for a blade mail, which is Arrow nice, but I think he just needs a BKB as they go in mid. Yeah, the Wraith King is going to be silenced up, and the nuke damage is coming his way, but it's not enough because Wii is going to fall beforehand, and now with the sun going the way of Zenigata, he is also going to die. They get the kill on the Brewmaster, but now they grip up the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker trying to kill down Tradada, or rather Vigos, but he is going to respawn. They buy back on the Brewmaster, he wants to get back into this fight. He has a blink clap, but no ultimate available as they do. Stun up Padrino with the arrow, and now nuke him down with the blast, and now Buffney not looking too great here as they will be able to get the clap, and he's going to die. Uh, one way or another, he's going to be brought down by Vigos. And it cost him a buyback, but still a favorable trade for kills now this way going to Moscow 5. And since they're close to it, this tier 2 tower in mid is almost slated to surely fall. Indeed, I don't think they're going to be able to defend this tier 2. They might even decide to go high ground to tier 3. They have the ability to, and they're going to catch out Wii once more. The silence has stood no chance versus that full combination. And that is just the sheer strength of the momentum from Moscow 5 at this point in the game. We consider 
This could potentially be a blink dagger coming up for Vigos as well at some point. And if he goes for a blink, he's just going to be able to start all of these fights up without much threat of his own life. Yeah. Currently at the highest level in the game. Pretty much as expected since he hasn't died more than once. And he also has the Midas for up and running. But this is going to be very important for Moscow 5 as this is a core Wraith King. And he needs to have the uptime on the enemy heroes. But if he has a blink, getting in the face of the Zeus and Silencer, Skyrath, Mage, hell, pretty much everybody. It's pretty much going to net them a kill. It's a game where it's good to be the Wraith King. They have their nice combo, which is good and all. For getting the first kill off of you, but the second reincarnation is going to be so important for Vigas, and it's where he's going to do most of his damage. Indeed, the reincarnation is pretty much everything for the Moscow 5, I'll point out, not just Vigas. Well, you've got to consider that reincarnation will trigger in the middle of the fight, especially if he gets that blink dagger and is the first one in, drops that stun, potentially he gets focused, he falls. Reincarnation triggers. That's going to slow everyone on the side of Balkan Bears if they're close, and then what's going to happen? Pugma's going to life drain someone, they're not going to escape. PGG is going to throw an arrow at someone, they're not going to escape. You've got a Brewmaster who's going to be in the mix in Primal Split. Do I need to say it again? They're not going to escape. And one more time for the Bane. If they're Fiend's Grip, they're not going to escape. Nature's Prophet, however, will as he TPs back to base. No way to cancel that coming up for the Wraith King in a fast enough time since he couldn't get the vision over the trees there. Um, but it's a group up coming up from Moscow 5 up top. The Bloodseeker is inbound. He has one hero low, which is the Wraith King, who is farming bottom. True, but on that bottom lane, we do have the threat of Vigos. So he's going to have to TP, surely, to try to defend with his team. But then again, he doesn't have anything else. But in the meantime, mid lane, PGG will pick up the killing spree. But in comes the Mystic Flare. It only connects on a Primal Split, however, so that's a complete whiff. Now we've got a Fiend's Grip locking down Padrino. But PGG silenced up. He is the target of everyone. Silence is just suspended in midair as well by the Primal Split. If it doesn't matter, Zenigata will fall. Now they're going to look for... Uh, we, but he might TP out in time. Will he be able to escape this one? Yes, he will. His TP is just in time. And this is a 4v5 fight with no presence from the Wraith King. No Vigos at all. And it's still a win for Moscow 5. I'm not sure if I... I didn't check the uh, Brulings, actually, whether or not they had the Cyclone there. But that would have been the only thing fast enough to cancel that last TP and secure them the last kill. But now, they are at a Tier 2 tower. They have a Pugna. They have pretty much everything they need to take it. And, well, they are down with their Brewmaster split, they still have to blink on him, and once they bring the Wraith King, there's very little they can actually do to fight into this. The focus fire coming out from Moscow 5 is just so good. They focus down the Bloodseeker, and that's really the pivotal hero in these fights for Balkan Bears. They need to get everybody low with their other heroes, but they can be anywhere on the map. Padrino can't die. No, Padrino can't die, and he is always the focus of the Fiend's Grip. The last two fights where we've seen a Fiend's Grip, they've been thrown straight onto the Bloodseeker. And that's how you deal with a Bloodseeker, be it in a pub, be it in a pro game. If you see a Bloodseeker, you hit it with a CC effect straight away. Yeah. Because if you leave him there, if you like kind of half commit, he'll be able to heal up throughout the rest of the team fight. Even if he doesn't get the last hit, he'll still be able to heal off of those heroes. And it is something that a lot of lower tier players or pub players underestimate is that healing coming out from the Bloodseeker, but not something that Moscow 5 are even going to give a chance to. Um, yeah, I, I think it's the right choice. There's nobody else that you really need to fiend script. Padrino is pretty much the only one. Unless he's already dead. I'd completely agree, and you've got to consider once Balkan Bears use their combination of their ultimates, they are on cooldown for a significantly long time. We see no refreshes, we see no scepters. It's a long way off, and Zenigara will be the victim of a PGG arrow, as well as Tron jumping in with that thunderclap. And right now, I'm honestly just waiting for Moscow 5 to say, let's push the base. I feel like they have everything they need. They might go for this little final tier 2 first, but I think they're just going to take the high ground as soon as they have this Aegis. I think it's a fair assessment, but before they go for it, they'll go into the Roshan pit. I think they can go just straight down top lane, uh, take the tier 2, and then go high ground afterwards. Um, depending on how that fight goes, um, if they try to fight next to that tier 2, it could be a better place for Moscow 5 to take the engagement. Um, yeah, they'll take this Roshan with very little to no contest. Zeus ultimate has been reserved for the big combo, which is nice and all, but it's losing out on a little bit of the utility of scouting out. They'll give the Aegis to the Wraith King, and with this, he doesn't have a Blink Dagger, but he has the Armlet. He's going to be doing a whole lot of damage, and he can just run headlong into the enemy team with three lives under his belt. Indeed, three lives and very little that Balkan Bears can do to stop him. Sure, how they can kill him once with their combination, maybe. The second time, not a chance. I don't think they're even going to be able to kill him the second time, so the third time isn't even an option at this point. He's not going to need it, I don't think. 
So I'm sort of surprised they didn't decide to put the Aegis perhaps on the Brewmaster, on PGG, or maybe on the Pugna. The heroes that are more susceptible to death. Yeah, I, I would have liked seeing it on the Pugna best, because once Tron uses his ultimate, his effectiveness is more or less done, and with the BKB, he should reliably be able to get that one off, as long as he just waits until the Global Silence comes off. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure if the Aegis would be necessary in him. The Marana, it is a support Marana after all, even though she has, or rather PGG has quite a lot of farm on it, akin to the farm of the Nature's Prophet, it's still not hitting as hard as your other heroes, like the Pugna, who'll do more sustained damage throughout the team fights. PGG is more or less there for the arrow and the Starfall. I would completely agree, and in the meantime, now we have potential for that push. Arrow's gonna fly in, not gonna connect on the Zeus, but it does not matter. Moscow 5 already set up on the high ground, they have that Nether Ward down, you can't really fight into this, and even if you try now, you're gonna have to deal with Vigos, not twice, but three times potentially, and now we get the jump in, they're looking for the Mystic Flare, they do get the silence, but the BKB is there by Tron, and now we go with the Global Silence, it's gonna buy some time, but Balkan Bears, they kill off Vigos once. He's now back. He's no longer silenced either. They'll bring down the silence of the Zeus has fallen. Now they're going to look for Zenigata. Two big swings of Vigos' sword. And now where do they go? They look for the Bloodseeker. He's not going to escape this one. Gets hit with the Wraith Fire Blast. In comes the silence once more. Immediately hit with the Fiend's Grip. Buy back by the Skyrath Mage as well though. But that's a dieback by Wii. He cannot do a thing. That's a <laughs> killing spree for a support Marana by PPG, PGG. And this is GG in game number one. Yeah, it was an unconventional draft that BBC did not get off to a good start. When you pick those so-called pocket strats, you really have to snowball incredibly hard. It was looking good after the first couple of fights down in bottom, but in the end, it was Moscow 5 that just had the better execution as well as the more stable draft. I'd completely agree. You, when you rely on a pocket strat like Balkan Bears here, it just it gives you such a big opening when those ultimates are on cooldown, and Moscow 5 just wedged a nail straight through the gap and just took everything they could possibly want. After a very long series previously, that's going to be a 20-minute Game 1 victory for Moscow 5, but we'll have Game 2 coming up shortly, so don't go anywhere. More Dota action on Hefla TV.